Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty well today. This is going to be a pretty quick tutorial on the TACAN system in the F-16, though most of this information is applicable to all aircraft that are equipped with TACAN. But of course, the way that we are going to input frequencies and things like that is going to be strictly for the F-16. First thing, though, is to come down here on our right side to the avionics power panel and pay attention to the mids LVT switch and make sure that's on. If you did a hot start or if you did your cold start, then it's on by default in the hot start and you should have turned that on in your cold start. If not, make sure that's on. This is for data link and most relevant in this case, of course, is TACAN. And this stands for Multifunctional Information Distribution System Low Volume Terminal. Next, we are going to come up to the DED and the ICP. You want to make sure that your DED is on the CNI page, which is the Communications, Navigation, and Information page. If it isn't, press the dauber switch left to return until you get back to that. And then we're going to press 1, our ICP, ICP Priority Function button 1, TACAN ILS, and come to this page. All the stuff on the right side, that's about ILS, that will be covered in a different video when I do an ILS landing video for the F-16, but today we're just going to be focusing on the TACAN portion of this, which is the things on the left side. So, in the top left, we have the mode that it is in, so currently set to receive, we have three modes, air-to-air, -air or tra receive, transmit-receive, and air-to-air, -air, transmit-receive. So, to change those modes, we are going to do Dauber switch right, transmit receive, air to air transmit receive, and back to receive. The thing is with, so okay, so in DCS, air to air transmit receive or tack in with tankers is not simulated exactly realistically. I believe in real life they utilize the air to air mode and do yard sticking essentially, which is when you set your tack in frequency 63 channels above or below, or 63 channels apart from another aircraft, and then you will be able to get your bearing and uh, distance information from them. So that can be useful in order to find another aircraft in your flight, and in real life to find the tanker. I believe in real life with KC-135s, they only get distance information, though with the KC-10s and KC-46s, they do get um, the bearing information as well but we don't have those in DCS, so you don't need to worry about that. And the point is moot anyway, because it's not simulated perfectly accurately. It essentially functions exactly the same as a ground beacon. So we will just talk about that first. I will give an example with the tanker, but I will also utilize this with the a ground station. So first thing I'm gonna talk about real quick is the band. So you have two bands, X and Y. Sometimes tankers will be set in a mission, or you could set them in the mission editor to be on the Y band, but by default they're on X, and generally speaking I just leave it on there. If you did need to change that though, you would have these asterisks in this default position, this blank space, and you would simply press 0 and then enter, and it changes that to Y, but we're going to be changing that back to X for this. So, I am going to want to go to Shvangdalum here. The TACAN station is 32 X ray. So we are going to put 32 here. So double switch down next to channel, 32, enter. And now we have the beacon and SPA, here are Papa Alpha, which is the code referring to that station. Now we have a couple, of, we have our TACAN volume here. And if you listen. That is Morse code that is going to be beeping out this code here so that you could audibly identify and ensure that you are set to the correct station. But because I don't know Morse code and because we have this display here anyway, you can just look at that. And I usually turn the tack in volume off because the beeping gets annoying and it will still work if the volume is off unlike ILS, for example, which you do have to have the volume up in order for it to work. But anyway, we're going to come down here now to the EHSI, the Electronic Horizontal Situation Indicator. We have a few different things here. Heading, which can adjust our heading, of course. The heading can be useful if you are utilizing 
the autopilot in heading select. Next we have the course knob which is useful for setting the course of course which is useful for when you're utilizing ILS and I like to have it anyway if you have the tack in displayed on the HUD it will put the needles there so that you can make sure that you're on the right course. I'm going to talk about that in just a second in a little bit more detail. You can also adjust the brightness by left clicking and holding on the course knob and then using scroll wheel to adjust that. But what we need here is the mode knob. So we're going to press M. We have four modes. Nav, which is our steer points. PLS slash nav, which is precision landing system and nav, which is ILS. And tack in and then PLS tack in. So one we need right now is tack in. In receive mode, which is the default, we are going to get our course deviation, which is this line. This is our course line and our deviation from it. And we are also going to get our bearing information, but no range. So, set this to transmit receive. Again, we're going to want to press sequence on the dauber switch. Set it to transmit receive. And now we're going to have our range as well. This is the most useful mode and is basically the only mode that I ever use. Because in DCS, it works with the tankers. It also works with the airfields. And it will give us our bearing and it will give us our distance to the tack and station. So, real quick, let me contact the airbase here. What is it? 251-800. Um, one here. 251-800. And we'll just contact that. In field one, inbound. Pause here. I just wanted to check the runway. Now this does not display our bearing to the TACAN station on the HUD, so we simply have to look at the EHSI and go to this blue arrow that is right there. So we're going to turn towards that. We're going to level out right here. We'll just put our autopilot on. Go back into active pause for the minute. Now, this said runway 2-3, so I like to get a precise heading, which will be 236. And I like to do that because if I'm landing, for example, when there is no visibility, like at night or especially in a storm, you want that, that course or that heading of the runway to be exactly correct. Because if it's a few degrees off, then you're going to have problems when you're trying to land when you can't see the runway until you're basically over it. So talk about this symbology now. On the outside of this heading tape we have one little line here in the middle that is called the lubber line and that is the heading that we are currently going so that's about 25 right now 251. We have this blue arrow on the outside on that heading tape which is the bearing to the Takan station and we have our course line and our course deviation line and we just set that of course to 236 and this indicates that we need to move or that we are to the left of it so we need to move to the right to line up on it we also have this triangle which is the two from triangle so if we're heading roughly towards it it will be on this side up here and this side of the uh, deviation line there and if it is if we're heading away from it then it would be on the other side if we unpause this here i'll keep flying towards it I'm going to skip ahead until I'm closer. Okay, so we are now closer to the airfield. That's it right there. We are almost on the course, which is 236. We're going to have to come 3 degrees left. But you can see that we are still offset from our course line. We want to line that up. Now, this big blue line is to the right of our course line. And as you can see, the airfield is to the right of us. So we want to make sure that's lined up. So in order to do that, you would fly over here. So essentially, if you're trying to fly along that course, you want to fly towards that blue line. And you'll see now that it is moving towards the center there. So we just want to then fly back left here.
so that we are now lined up along it. Hopefully though this was helpful to you. It is fairly simple. But anyway, um, I hope that this was helpful like I said. If you want to like, subscribe, join the Discord, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, if you join the Discord, you'll be able to contact myself or anybody else there to ask and get you know more detailed help and assistance for the F-16. But anyway, um, I hope I that you have a good one, and I hope that I will see you in the next video.